welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer. I'm an expat here living in Dubai with my French husband Laurent and my two daughters, Isla who's three and Iris who's 10 months. Before becoming a stay-at-home mom, I was an early years and primary school teacher and now I create content about motherhood, parenting and homeschooling. So if that's content that interests you, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 open-ended toys and in my opinion, the only toys your child needs. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So before we continue with the video and sharing with you my top 10 open-ended toys, I just want to say that for each of the toys that I'm going to be sharing with you today, they come as a category of toy and there are both cheap options and more expensive options. So regardless of your situation, there are budget-friendly options within each category and you can buy as many in each category or as few as you like. So all of the options are both budget friendly and very minimalist as well. So my first top open-ended toy is fabric. There are lots of different kinds of fabrics um, that are out there that are very, very expensive play silks and um, also inexpensive ones as well. But you can also just use whatever you have around the house, whether you have all blankets and sheets or scarves like these ones that I have that I no longer wear. So fabric is a fantastic toy and you might be wondering to yourself why I think this is uh, such a fantastic toy. It's so open-ended, there are lots of things that you can do with fabric. For example, with babies you can play peekaboo. You can dance with them, you can do lots of movement, put on some music, dance around with fabrics. You can use larger pieces of fabric to create dens. Uh, for your child to hide in. You can choose coloured fabrics and lay them down. For example, this could be uh, the water for my little animals to play in. They could be used for dress up. This could be a cloak. It could be a hair tie. It could be a scarf. It could be so many things and really you're limited only by your imagination with play silks. My second top open-ended toy uh, is blocks. Um, we have these sort of natural blocks that I got from Toys for Less and um, we got this for about 100 dirham, it was a really good deal. Um, but really building materials, building blocks, it can come in all different shapes and sizes. I prefer the natural blocks because they're a little bit more open-ended, you can use them for different things. They're also great for babies because they're not painted or anything. Um, uh, baby Iris can nibble on these, she can chew on these while she's teething and aesthetically they're really pleasing as well. But you can buy uh, Duplo, Lego, uh, Magnetiles, widgets. Uh, there are so many options out there for building materials uh, and building blocks for your child to use. And why are they so great? While your child is using building blocks to create um, and construct. They're using their visual spatial skills, they're using hand-eye coordination to uh, make sure that their building and construction doesn't fall down. Um, they can be used for babies as well, like I say, you can cover up the blocks and um, play a sort of peekaboo, an object permanence activity. You can build up towers for crawling babies to encourage them to come and knock it down again. There are just so many things that you can do with blocks. It's such an amazing open-ended toy and you can use it to construct anything. Um, we use it to construct um, castles and forts and uh, zoos and there's just so many options. It's such a fantastic toy. My third top open-ended toy um, are loose parts and you might be wondering what loose parts are. Um, loose parts are actually a wide variety of different uh, items and they're not necessarily uh, classified as a toy but are used in children's play. And the best thing about them is that you probably already have loose parts in your home that you can be using. For example, uh, the little caps off of feeding pouches for babies um, are a fantastic loose part. Um, you can use uh, tools from your toolbox, little nuts and bolts. Um, of course you want to make sure that your child is of an age where they're no longer putting things in their mouth and that you don't have any babies around with these small items. Um, but we have slightly larger loose parts in our house because baby Iris is on the move and she has access to everything in our play area. 
So we, um, I've gone for little wooden peg dolls. These were really, really cheap, just natural peg dolls that I got from Etsy. Um, you can go to the beach and collect yourself some shells. These are another fantastic loose part. Cut bits of wood and sticks. Acorns are another great one, especially if you're in Europe and you have um, a lot of access to acorns, especially during the winter time. Um, corks. Um, if you enjoy a glass of wine, start collecting your corks off of the bottles. And these are all fantastic loose parts. Loose parts are really defined as items that your child can carry, move around, put inside containers. They can line them up, they can categorize, they can sort them. Um, they can use them in their imaginative play. The little peg dolls can be people, they can be baby bottles. The corks can be used in the play kitchen as bits of food. Um, really, the world is your oyster and if you just go around your house today and just find lots of loose parts, anything that your child can really tinker with and come up with their own purpose for um, is considered a loose part. This is such a fantastic resource to have in your home and your child will find hours of entertainment with and uh, really develop their creativity. My fourth top open-ended toy is uh, another freebie. It's actually recycled junk. Um, just anything really that uh, you would normally throw out into your recycling bin. If you've seen one of my previous videos about uh, what was on my baby's shelf, uh, recently. Um, I've created a whole wide variety of sensory bottles just using plastic bottles and just stuff that I went around the house to find. You can make really beautiful sensory bottles for your baby and um, you can do wet or dry ones and they're just a lot of fun to have. If you've got older siblings you can get them involved to find little things that they can pop inside the bottles for your baby. Kitchen roll rolls or toilet rolls um, can be used as telescopes they can be chopped up to make binoculars, they could be little uh, tunnels for uh, cars to go down. Um, you can uh, put them in a tray with some paint and roll with them. They could be a little roller in your child's play kitchen. There are just so many options for recycled junk and the best part is that it's free. My fifth top recommendation for open-ended toys uh, is a dolly. Um, I don't think it really matters what kind of dolly you have, there are such a wide variety. You get weighted dollies that feel real, you get ones that are very realistic looking, you get ones of all different shapes, sizes, squishy, some that make noises, some that pee, that poo, um, the works. It doesn't really matter. The point is it represents a being that allows you to foster your child's natural urge to nurture and protect. Um, you'll find with a lot of children, they have this natural urge to take any item and pretend it's a baby or something that something that's vulnerable that needs to be cared for. And um, it's such a wonderful quality about children that should be fostered. And this is such a great way to do it. It also provides your child with practical life activities such as bathing a baby. How do we hold the baby? Um, and it's such great practice if you are expecting a baby and they're going to be an older sibling. Um, just practicing these things with your child. It also allows your child to work through any situations in the family that they uh, might have experienced you'll find that children when they um, use imaginative play it's based on what they see and what they hear around them so very often when I hear Isla playing uh, with her dollies and characters I hear her repeat all of the things that I say to her and um, so whenever for example if uh, Isla is going through um, a very hard time she's having big feelings all of the words and phrases that I use to help her um, overcome these feelings are the same ones that I hear her repeating to her dollies. So I think it's such a great way for children to work through and really internalize the things that they are learning. Number six on my top recommendations for open-ended toys are animal figurines. We collect uh, the Schlake brand um, we try our best anyway, sometimes we can't get a hold of the ones that we want here in Dubai. Um, so we will look at Mojo or Safari LTD um, instead. But the most important thing is really to find as lifelike as possible um, examples of animals and try to have them um, 
at a, at a correct scale um, according to each other. So for example, um, you know, a mouse shouldn't be larger than your elephant. Uh, for example, and um, if you have a look at the Schleich toys, they are very true to life. They have all the lines and wrinkles and the, the, the colours um, that you would expect to see in, in real life. And I think they are such a fantastic resource because children have this natural tendency to be interested in animals around them. Um, I think it's really good because you're giving them the, the sort of real life experience with um, animals that they wouldn't normally come into contact with. We live in Dubai, for example, so we wouldn't even come into contact with um, forest creatures from Europe. We wouldn't come into contact with African animals or Indian animals. So it's really good for um, introducing these animals, the vocabulary, but also about their habitats, uh, talking about carnivores and herbivores and omnivores, talking about um, climates, um, all of all the different topics that we've been learning about in the early years usually involve animals one way or another and they're such an important part of our world that um, it's such a great resource to have um, for your child in the home. Number seven on my top recommendations for open-ended toys are books. Now books don't seem like an obvious choice for toys but they are so important to young children. They're important to everybody in my humble opinion and there are so many different kinds of books that you can pick up whether or not you have the money to spend on books. Um, there are libraries, there are second-hand shops that you can go and pick up books for next to nothing, uh, just for pennies really. And books just open up the world to your child. Um, it allows them to see and experience things that they would never get the chance to see and experience in real life. Books are proven to expand your child's brain development. They increase vocabulary. They allow you to have a bonding moment with your child where you're sitting all cozy, maybe with a blanket, and you're reading stories to your child. Um, it just gives you that time together. It's really, really special. Um, Isla and I sit together um, quite a lot throughout the day and I just read story after story after story. She can't get enough books. We have a huge library of stories and it's Isla's most favourite thing to do in the world. And Iris is taking after her for sure because she loves sitting with books as well. You get different kinds of books for young babies uh, with touchy-feely pictures. Um, these are fantastic books for babies. I absolutely love them because they have uh, photographs as opposed to drawings which um, are fantastic for young babies who are seeing these things maybe for the first time. You get books about your child's interests, about really any topic and uh, they are so flexible and it also provides you with lots of information about topics of interest for your child. It also introduces your child to some pre-reading skills. So if you're reading with your child close together, you might be pointing out different letters that you can see, some letter sounds. You might be pointing out the shapes of letters. You might be pointing out who the author is of this book. We've read a book by this person before. Um, who's the illustrator? I wonder how they created this picture. I'm um, talking about what they can see in the pictures. Um, it's just such a fantastic resource to have in the home and for me it is my number one uh, toy for sure. Number eight on my top recommendations for open-ended toys are vehicles. Now you have lots of different kinds of vehicles um, that you might want to purchase for your child. I really like uh, little wooden vehicles. You can buy cars, trucks, diggers. For some children vehicles are become a great interest. Um, especially construction vehicles and emergency vehicles and they're just such a fantastic toy. Um, they can be categorised, they can be lined up, they can be moved around, lots of role play involved. You can introduce vocabulary um, about different vehicles. You can introduce emergency vehicles and talk about the role that they play in society. Train sets are really popular with young children, um, especially uh, putting the tracks together and creating new tracks every time. Um, it's very, very popular in this house. So vehicles are a fantastic open-ended toy. And number nine on my top recommendations for open-ended toys uh, are balls. In this house we have a wide variety. Uh, we have different sensory balls um, that belong to Iris. 
Um, we have little bean bag balls for juggling. We have little sensory balls, and they're all furry and fuzzy. And uh, we have sport balls, uh, tennis balls, golf balls. <laughs> basketballs, footballs, and they can be used for different games. For Iris, they're a great sensory toy. A lot of young children go through uh, a trajectory schema whereby they want to throw everything. They're throwing their food off the table. They are um, throwing things in the house that you wouldn't necessarily want to be thrown. And it's a bit of a problematic schema and in that it can be quite destructive. Um, if you don't have an outlet for it and you don't have the tools necessary for your child to go through that schema without uh, destroying everything. So um, we have balls in this house, all different kinds. Uh, the soft ones are allowed to be thrown in the house and into baskets. So that's a great activity that you can get your toddler to do is just to throw balls into a basket. And the bigger or harder balls can be thrown outside. They can also be used for balancing on a spoon to practice hand-eye coordination. They can help your child develop a lot of skills such as, such as throwing and catching and rolling. So they're so flexible. They're such an amazing open-ended toy. Um, I can't recommend them highly enough. And number 10 on my top 10 recommended open-ended toys list uh, are art supplies. Um, art supplies are so crucial for young children. They provide so much um, for young children in terms of allowing them to mark make, uh, practice scissor skills, hand-eye coordination, their fine motor skill development, um, their pre-writing skills. Depending on the variety and type of art materials that you supply your child, um, just gives them a wide variety of different options. So for example, in, in my home we have an art trolley and on that art trolley I rotate the different equipment because there's just too much. Um, Isla would be overwhelmed if I put everything out. Um, but we have watercolours, play-doh, um, pens, pencils, stickers, um, a tape dispenser, um, we have whiteboard markers and we have um, whiteboard marker sleeves for different activities that I can slip into the sleeve and she can uh, write on them with the whiteboard markers. I have clipboards so that um, if Isla wants to draw somewhere other than a table, she has a hard surface to work on. We have glue sticks, we have liquid glue, we have pipe cleaners, googly eyes, um, pretty much the works. And it was all very inexpensive and it just provides so many different activities for your child. Whether you are just using Play-Doh, if you have access to the outside world, you can use some of those loose parts that I was mentioning earlier. Go and find some acorns and sticks and leaves and things and you can use that in the Play-Doh um, or flowers from the garden. If you go into the bathroom and grab a, a little mirror, um, your child can do a self-portrait using whatever materials that you have. If you have a pair of scissors and some paper and some glue, that will provide your child with so many different opportunities to learn and develop those uh, fine motor skills and that creativity. So art materials are so, so important and they're so open-ended. There are so many different activities. If you go online, uh, you will find so many different arts and crafts activities that you can provide for your child with very little effort and even if you don't have any paper but you have some paints lying around um, you can you can allow your child to paint on the windows or in, inside the bath or take it outside they can paint themselves there are just so many opportunities uh, for creativity and skill development using art materials it is way up there on my top 10 recommended open-ended toys list so that's it. That was my top 10 recommendations for open-ended toys and in my opinion, the only toys your child needs. If you agree with my list, then let me know in the comments below. If you disagreed with my list and you have your own list of top 10 recommended open-ended toys, then please share it down below. Uh, share it with the group. I'd love to hear your ideas too. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.